In this Pro Bike video, we're going to check out Grant Ferguson's Superior. Now, you're probably actually wondering why there's no stickers on the frame apart from his name. Well, it's actually a prototype, it's not in production yet, and this is her first full suspension bike. So let's take a look. So let's kick it off. You can see all these little details, the vinyls that have been put on the frame there, just to take away the fold, so you can't actually work out quite what the carbon's doing, and just to make it a little bit secretive. It's got 100 millimeters of suspension, done by this DT Swiss rear shock, and it's a full carbon frame set. The drivetrain is taken care of by Shimano, and it's a DI2 group set, so it's an electronic shifting mech, and you actually see it's got a nice bit of cable housing here, just giving it a little bit of extra protection. Shimano XTR cassette as well. It's an 11 all the way up to a 40 tooth cassette. And you've got a Shimano XTR crank set up front as well. It's a 32 tooth chainring and 175 millimeter cranks. Let's take a look at the cockpit. And the bars coming up to them, they're actually pretty narrow. They're 665 millimeters, and that's just to get through that start line when there's so many people around you. They're a set of FSA K Force, and they're actually full carbon as well. The stem, well, it's pretty long just looking at it. It's actually 110 millimeters in length. The grips, the push on grips, quite soft, quite spongy as well. You've got a set of Shimano XTR race brakes and also a Shimano XTR DI2 shifter. The other thing on the bar is this DT Swiss, and that just locks out the fork and the shock. So it's a two in one, and with one push of the button, it locks out both. So the tires are supplied by Maxxis, they're the Icon, and they're 2.2 in width. It's also got a set of stands, no tubes, rims, they're carbon and they're the Valor version. It's a 29 inch wheeled bike. And other things that he's got, he's got that 160 mil disc rotors, both front and rear. The suspension is covered by DT Swiss. And the first thing that I'm actually gonna notice is the fact that he's got a carbon crown here. So that's gonna keep it extra lightweight. It's gonna minimize any weight and it's gonna be super stiff as well. It's also got a DT Swiss rear shock and that's X313. And like I said, you can actually lock them out via the handlebar. Other features, I'm going to move on to the K-Force FSA seat post that he's got. Look at the length of that as well, it's quite tall. And then he's got a Cell Italia saddle finishing it off with a set of carbon rails. You can also see his names throughout the bike, on the wheels and on the top tube. So we've checked out your bike. Just a couple of questions about it. So this is your first full suspension bike. Has there been many adjustments to changing onto the bike? Uh, since, um, since I got it, I've, yeah, I've set up the forks and the rear shock a bit differently and then yeah, I've played around with a few areas. Um, the stem length as well I've played with, but I've tried to set up to start with similar to my hardtail, so I, uh, I'm just getting used to it, but I think I'll be making more changes. Yeah. And things like the two lock that you've got on the bars there, do you use that a lot when you're racing? Does it really help just locking out to get the maximum efficiency from the bike? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, the first start hill here, for example, is straight up a tarmac road, so you got it locked out and just straight up the hill because um, it's wasting energy if you, if you don't, you know, so... Uh, Different parts of the track require different things. So. I noticed as well, going over your bike, that the bars are actually quite narrow, the stem's long. Can you talk us through a little bit about that and your selection? Yeah, I mean, I'm running 665 width bars, which is also, it's pretty narrow, yeah. But the main reason I've gone for that is it is a bit narrow, but in the start of 140 bars, I've always found it's it's easier to fit through gaps if you're not really wide. So I've, that's where that comes from, and I've just adjusted to it. So now I'm quite comfortable with that, but saying that if a wider bar does handle some descents quite nice, but that was the, that's the thought behind that. Yeah. Thanks Grant for letting us check out your bike. For more videos on GMBN, why don't you click on me and you'll get through to the Pro Bike playlist. And click on me to find out a bit more about it cross country. As ever, don't forget to subscribe, you get a great video every day of the week.